Hi, Miles here, and I'm sorry I haven't done a video for a little while. Uh, I've been very busy with this COVID-19 stuff, uh, but I've got a bit of time uh, this afternoon, so I'd like to show you this machine that I've made for myself. This is a little uh, personal air conditioning machine, if you like. And the reason why I made it is because actually I sleep really badly if the room's too warm. I've, I've always been a bit like that. Uh, so what I wanted to do was just make a little machine that would just blow a, uh, a lightly refrigerated uh, draft of cooled air uh, at me while I'm in bed so it just uh, help me sleep a little bit. Uh, I didn't want a great big full air conditioning machine running in the room. Um, they tend to use an awful lot of power, you know, there are big things to have there and you know they're a bit of a pain to install so I wanted something just a lot smaller that wouldn't cool the whole room, it just sort of waft a bit of uh, cooler air at me um, on my, my bedside cabinet just to sort of help me, uh, help me sleep a little bit. Um, I'm quite pleased with the machine. Uh, there's a lot of things that I would do differently if I was to build another one and maybe I will build another one at some point. Um, but if you're interested in building something like this yourself, um, what I'll do is just give you a bit of a walkthrough of how I've done this one. Uh, I do have some ideas of how it could be made better. Um, so perhaps you could take that uh, on board for your own, uh, your own thinking. Um, we'll do a little bit of a test as well because I've never actually tested this thing to see you know, how much it does actually cool the air. Um, so perhaps we can do that as well today. Well, before we get started looking at the machine, I just wanted to show you this uh, little white square here, it's four centimetres by four centimetres. It's called a tech panel, and uh, oh, I do see them called by other names as well. And these things are, they're pretty cheap, you can get them from uh, electronic stores, you can get them on eBay or Amazon or whatever. Um, and basically all they do is they convert a voltage differential coming down the wires into a temperature differential uh, on the two plates, on the two sides. So to put that in uh, sort of simpler terms, you connect the, the wires up here to a 12 volt power supply and uh, it creates a difference in temperature between the two sides. So one side heats up and the other one cools down, uh, to put it simply. However, it, is a, it forces a difference between the sides, not between the ambient air temperature. Let's suppose for a minute it starts at 15 degrees. Let's say in this room it's 15 degrees uh, Celsius. And let's say for argument's sake, um, when you put the power down the wires, it creates a 10 degrees uh, differential. That would mean that the cold side, it would try to cool down to uh, be 10 degrees Celsius, and the hot side, it would try to make 20 degrees Celsius, if that makes sense. So it's a 10 degrees uh, shift. So it'll make sense. However, if in that state you were to forcibly cool the hot side using uh, like liquid cooling, or a, or a fan or something like that. See, this is might be um, idling at 20. If you forcibly cool that down to, let's say, 10 degrees, because it works on a differential, that means this side is now going to be zero. You see, you force it down 10 degrees. And if you could force this one to, let's say, 5 degrees Celsius, this would become minus 5. So you're creating uh, like a, a really cool plate there that you can then use to cool uh, an airstream. And uh, that's how my my little air conditioner works, although mine uses three of these things. Right, so just looking at the machine itself, you can see we've got some uh, controls on the front here and on the side actually. And on the top we've got this uh, heat exchanger system that I've made. And uh, this is actually a CPU cooler. Only a really cheapy one, I think it's about £15. So it's basically got a CPU and a computer. And uh, there's a like a fan at the back, 12 volt fan there just blows air through. And if we have a bit of a look down here, you can see there's a copper block here. And this is thermally glued to the uh, CPU cooler. So instead of a CPU, it's a copper block. And underneath the copper block, you can see sandwiched just about three of those tech panels, uh, cold side up, warm side down. Then on the other side, on the, the hot side, if you like, there is an aluminium block this is actually a liquid cooling block. It's a bit like the uh, liquid cooling CPU blocks, but it's much cheaper. It's like an industrial one. It is, uh, I think it's about 20 centimetres along, something like that. Um, so it's a little bit too big, but that's fine. On the other side of this, there's two bobs for, for a hose. And the idea is you, you push water through it and it uh, provides cooling. And I've got these tech panels glued on. So the hot side is always touching these, um, or this aluminium uh, cooling block. If I can just show you on the, the back of the machine, 
Uh, there's two like hose attachments here and you pump uh, cold water into into one end and it it flows through some internal piping to this block flows through the block and then comes out the other side so as long as you've got a like a little pump just pushing the water through uh, it keeps this block cold if i can just show you the controls on the front now uh, the most obvious and simple one here just says power that just turns the thing on and off it's not plugged in at the moment but i'll show you that in a bit you've got pump here and rather than just have a, an on and off switch, I put a, a variable motor speed controller on. Um, and all that does is it gives a, like a 12 volt output to the, um, to the rear for the pump. I'll show you the pump in a bit, but I don't know if you can see that there, it's just sort of plus and minus. I could have just had a switch that turns the pump on and off, or maybe not even a switch at all, just have it permanently on. But the reason why I've gone for a motor controller is because I'm going to be sleeping next to this thing. Uh, I didn't want the pump going full blast all the time. I thought by being able to just turn the power of the pump down so it's a little bit quieter um, would be a welcome thing. Uh, or just leave it on full blast if you want. Uh, this one labelled fan. It's obviously the fan at the back of this. Um, there's be a good argument of just having it on all the time but I thought it'd make a better YouTube demonstration if I can turn the fan on and off. This one, very simple, it's just thermal, that turns the tech panels on or off. And there's a warning light there that um, comes on if the inside of this box, there's a power supply in here, if it starts getting a little bit too hot. Uh, so a warning light comes on just to let me know the internal uh, temperature is a little bit high. And there is a liquid crystal display here uh, that just tells you how much power the thing's using, how many watts uh, flowing through the system. So I just check that it's all uh, functioning as it should. If we just turn it around to the side. You'll see there's a, a fan here, fan inlet. Uh, again, that's got its own uh, controller because it does get a little warm inside. So I wanted to uh, make sure it wouldn't overheat. Um, so the air blows through there, blows over the circuitry inside that I'll show you in a bit and exits out of this exhaust here. But again I didn't want it blowing full blast if it didn't need it so you can just tune the, uh, the fan speed using that little, uh, little dial there. So that's the outside, should we open it up and have a look inside now? I've only got two screws holding this together because I knew I'd be uh, opening it for a, uh, a demo. Lift the lid off. There we go. I appreciate it looks quite complicated inside, but it, it isn't really, and none of this is really my sort of uh, circuit work. The big part is uh, this, this box here. This is a 15 amp power supply. Um, so the mains cable comes in at the back and runs to the, uh, the terminal block there. And it basically gives me a 12 volt, although I've tuned it up a little bit to about 14 for a bit more power. And so it gives me about 14 volts, up to 15 amps, that's you know, quite a lot. Uh, it did have like a, a lid on it, but I took that off because it was just sort of getting in the way really. You can see the two hose connections at the back just run up to the, uh, the two barbs on the back of the... Um, the aluminium heatsink. Over here you've got the, the pump motor controller. Again this is a pre-assembled thing, really cheap, just a few quid on eBay. Um, you give it DC in one end and it has like a, a controlled um, output on the other based on the, the, uh, the wheel here. So uh, that just fits in there quite nicely. The, um, the power meter is here, again that's a, an off-the-shelf thing, only a few quid. You know, I didn't didn't make the LCD display or anything. It's all well, you know. The hardest part really was just cutting the hole out. Um, the the coils or the the tech panels are, are all wide in in parallel through here, so that's why you've got uh, three red and three black, and also the uh, the fan uh, wires there as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, all pretty straightforward. Just want to talk briefly about the the heat dumping system here. I mean, obviously. You've got a lot of heat here you need to get rid of and um, 
I've done it through through liquid in here, so basically you, it doesn't matter which, but you, you use a pump to push cold water in one end and it flows through and then it comes out the other end and, and that's how you cool the thing down. In an ideal world, you would have some kind of heat exchanger outside the house. So I was thinking something like this. This is a uh, cooling radiator off a small motorbike, I think. Uh, these things are cheap, you can get them all over the place. Just a little, little radiator. And you'd have that outside uh, with a little fan on it of some kind. And you just have a closed circuit um, hose system to a, like a 12 volt pump that would just circulate the water around so the slightly warmer water would come out of the machine, get cooled down in the radiator, and then just goes back in again. Um, very, very simple indeed. Uh, I don't have that uh, ability here because the house I live in, uh, the walls are really thick and they're solid rock. They're about a metre thick or about three feet. Um, it's just how they're built around here. So it's, yeah, it's great in a hurricane. Uh, in fact, you could probably fire a nuclear weapon at this house and it'd be fine. Uh, but it's a real pain for, for drilling through and I, and I don't want to do that. But in most houses, you wouldn't have that as a problem. So the way I've opted to do it uh, for myself is to use a just a little water pump like this one. This is a for a camper or a, or a caravan. It's supposed to be for raising the water up to the taps uh, in the caravan. And all you do is you put a bit of garden hose on the end and you drop it into the um, your, your water butt. And when you connect the end up to 12 volts, it just pumps water out. It's a really very, very simple little cheap thing. Um, so you connect that to the, the positive and negative on the on the rear here. A bit of garden hose to there and a bit of go, garden hose coming back to the tank. And I've got like a like a beer keg. Uh, I'll show you in a bit, that's like a plastic drum. And you fill it with cold water, you drop that in, you just have the, the return just, just sort of drapes over the top of the, the barrel there. And uh, when you turn the pump on, it just cycles water around. Uh, which works fine, uh, but obviously you are heating the big barrel of water then that big barrel of water will slowly heat up um, which means the 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 effective cooling power of the machine does diminish with time it does take quite a while for i don't know how many gallons are in this tank it's probably two gallon tank something like that um it's only putting about 100 watts or so of heat into it um so it does take a while but as that water warms up and it, it does warm up if you leave this machine on for a few hours and you sort of just test the water and the drum you know it is a little warmer than it was um which is not ideal at all so it works best when you first turn it on the whole system's cool but then the uh, the cooling power will reduce over time and that's just an anomaly of having a, a tank inside the room just to show you this particular pump uh, it didn't actually last that long it was only really really cheap uh, it did last a while, but then the pump started making a horrible noise and then it stopped pumping water, which is no good. Um, so I've done away with that, actually. I haven't just gone and bought another one the same. I thought I'd try something that was designed for more continuous use. And I ended up buying a little fish tank pump here, just for creating a little water feature. Again, it was really cheap. Uh, it's got a 12 volt input there and a pump out. And all I do is connect this piece of old I think it's washing machine hose or something, but it's the same size as garden hose. And you just push that on one end and you get another piece of hose with nothing on the end and you put it back in the tank and you dip this in, connect it up. Um, this has got a, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, like a barrel thing on it, a barrel plug. I mean, I could have just cut that and have the bare ends, but I didn't want to spoil it. I've got a little adapter here that I made, so you can just plug that in and, and hook that up with the I-terminals there. And, uh, and that all works fine. So I think what we'll do now is I'll just hook it all up with the, uh, with the tank of water and uh, just show you the thing running really. Just to show you this uh, barrel setup, this is my beer keg. I filled it about half full with tap water. So you've got the two pipes coming in. Um, the pump's inside the water, it's submersible and uh, just goes to a, an empty one here and the water will just come out when you turn the pump on. Right, barrel's on the floor, so let's just turn this machine on and then turn the pump on. I don't know if you can pick that up on the mic, but you can hear the water flowing through. It's nice and quiet. I put the, uh, the fan on at the side as well, just to help cool the thing down. 
Right, so the water's now flowing through the aluminium block, it's not doing anything. Uh, actually, it feels a bit cool already, the water's starting to cool it down. Uh, just so we can see what difference it is actually making, I've got this little um, very accurate industrial thermometer. And today, here in this room, it's giving a reading of around 19 degrees. 19 and a half, oh, 20. Let's give it a second to settle down. Yeah, 21. Yeah, okay. I've just put the sensor in the light. That's probably what's doing it. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. If I put this um, little thermal sensor into it, there's a little hole in it that it's saying that's about 12 degrees, the metal, I guess it's just cooler. So the air temperature in here is about 20, but the metal uh, is about, yeah, about 12. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the, the cooling side, which is this one. I've not got the fan on, um, we're just going to watch the temperature drop um, as the... Uh, as these, these tech panels are now energized, so you should see, even though it's got to cool down this copper bar first, you see that temperature starting to drop. It's on, yeah, 10 now, it's starting to drop, yeah, below the 10. So there is, uh, there is refrigeration going on there. About five degrees, I'm not timing this, it's been about, it's been under a minute. It's at five degrees and it's still dropping. I reckon that's been about a minute now and it's about one degrees. That's quite impressive. It's now just dropping below one. I think we're going to get to get to zero in a second. It's been about two minutes now and you can see from the display there it's showing minus 4.2, minus 4.3, minus 4.5. It's still dropping, though it's starting to slow down a bit now. Uh, it's about to touch minus five. Yep, yeah, there we go. It's still dropping. I don't know how well you can see on the display there. Uh, it doesn't come out very clearly on the camera, but it's telling us that we are pulling through um, 244 watts of power uh, into the uh, into the tech panels. That's you know, quite a lot. It's more than I thought actually. Um, so that's the, the power of our cooling output, if you like, about 244 watts. I've left this now for about, I'd say it's probably about eight minutes. You can see the temperature gauge is kind of around between minus 13 and minus 14, so that's you know, quite a lot of refrigeration, really, um, considering the air temperature is 20 degrees in here, and it's all Celsius, obviously. So, yeah, it says it's just a bit more than 20. So let me turn this fan on and we'll see how much it actually cools the air. So on the inlet side, it's reading 21, 20, yeah, around 21 on the inlet side. On the outlet side, it's dropping the air to Sixteen less, so it's it's shaving a few degrees off the air temperature. So it's refrigerating the air. That that air does feel quite cool to, to my touch. Um, in a small space, obviously, it'll recycle and, and get cooler. But you know, it's it's not bad. It's not it's not powerful or anything. But uh, you know, it is it is knocking a few degrees off the air temperature. So this machine certainly works. Um, but I've got some problems with it and like I say I want to sort of share my feelings on those in case you want to build something like this yourself. Uh, firstly, uh, yes, it is putting out nice cold air. Um, I think it is quite compromised by the fact that the, the water tank is in the same room. Uh, I think that uh, really that needs to be outside. I think having the tank inside is um, a bit of a losing battle really. So uh, if you are building one of these, definitely do that. Have some kind of heat exchanger outside. 
Um, my next uh, problem with it is that um, the power supply inside is quite large and that 15 amp power supply actually makes quite a bit of heat. And if you're trying to build an air conditioner, which is supposed to cool things down, you, you're fighting against the heat of the, the power supply. So again, what I would do next time if I was going to have a power supply like that, is I would have that outside as well. Um, so any heat that it produces just vents the outside there and just have like a 12 volt power supply coming in uh, from that. I, I think um, having a great big 15 amp power supply in here does, does compromise it quite a bit. Um, something else I thought of actually that you could do um, if I was doing this again. These uh, three tech panels, they are wired in parallel. If I'd wired them in series and used a 36 volt power supply, it would have been much lower ampage. I would have only needed a 5 amp power supply for the same wattage, which would have been a much smaller uh, unit and produced less heat, be much more uh, efficient little, uh, little power supply. I don't really know why I'd opted to do it in parallel. Um, probably just for the 12 volt electrical system, so you know the fan and the pump could use it, but there would have been other ways around that. Um, so that would have been a, a better call, I think, is to um, use a higher voltage power supply for less amps. And then having thought about that a little bit more, you actually could probably do away with uh, the power supply altogether if you had enough of these uh, tech panels, you see. I mean, three, of the, three of these isn't really that powerful. I mean, it's okay for me, I get a nice cool breeze uh, over my face at night, but in a lot of ways, I wish I'd have had more than, than three. Now, let's supposing I had 10, um, and that would have been quite powerful. Uh, at 12 volts, 10, if you put them in series, that would have been 120 volts, which is the, the main supply um, in, uh, in the US and some other countries. So you could have just used a bridge rectifier, you know, had I been in, in, in the US or a 120 volt country, uh, a bridge rectifier would have just converted the AC mains into DC, just a, just a little thing, a little capacitor to smooth it out. And then it could have been wired directly, you know, like um, Christmas tree lights, you have lots of little 12 volt bulbs, there's 10 of them together. Uh, it would be 20 in this country because our voltage is double that. Um, but that would have been a nice neat system, there would have been no power supply at all, um, so there would been no excess heat for that to get rid of. And 10 of these tech panels would have produced quite a bit of cooling power you'd have been looking at. I don't know, seven or eight hundred watts, something like that, uh, of cooling, maybe even a bit more. Uh, you could do the same here in the UK, but you would need 20 tech panels if you want to run them direct off the mains. You know, 20 is quite a lot. You know, you'd have been looking at 1500 plus watts. Uh, it could be done, you know, two rows of 10. Um, it'd be quite a, a beefy thing. You'd have to get your, your water cycling really good. You'd have to have a, a nice tank outside, but you'd be getting up to the sort of power capacity there of um, a commercial uh, air conditioner there. You'd need several of these um, uh, sort of heat exchangers here, but you know, that, that could be done. You could build a, a much bigger machine in that way and it would work fine. Um, it wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted something smaller. That just about concludes my video about my little uh, personal air conditioner machine. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do please leave a like. I do appreciate that. Uh, and do subscribe as well if you want to see more videos um, in the future. You know, if more subscribers I get, the more uh, encouraged I am to make these videos. Uh, if you have any questions about this, um, then do please ask in the, the questions below. I'll do my best to answer. All right, well, hope to see you in a future video soon. Bye-bye.